Hello, welcome to Marketing Matters, the show where we explore all things marketing. <coughs> Excuse me. And uncover those things that matter for you and your success. I'm your host, Denise Malay, and my hope and mission is to bring marketing and technology to you in a way that's useful without complexity, jargon, or confusion, so that you can grow your business, expand your impact in the world, and build your best life. Today's episode is called Incorporate Live Video in Your Routine. We're going to look at ways you can create live video in support of your business and your brand. So here we go. But first, let me share a quote with Mr. Albert Einstein. We all know who he is, right? Well, he was a groundbreaking mathematician, physicist, scientist, and I found it interesting to see him touch on art in this quote. Art is standing with one hand extended to the universe and one hand extended into the world and letting ourselves be a conduit for passing energy. I wanted to share this quote today because we're going to talk about live video and your personal brand and to me, that is your art, that is your creativity, that is your person, and sharing that out into the world is incredibly beneficial. You're taking your expertise and your knowledge and your potential and sharing it with others to increase their potential and help them and serve the world. And so to me, I see us as kind of the conduit conduits to share our expertise and to serve the world. So why do we want to focus on live video, right? Well, um, Robert Weiss wrote in this article, the title is down here, business decision makers love online video because it gives them the most amount of information in the shortest amount of time. I don't know about you, but when I replay a video, I play it at like one and a half speed so that I can listen and process it faster. And that's just me, and might be a little bit weird, but video is faster than reading because reading, you have to turn those words into a visual in your brain and then link that image to what was being said and you have to produce comprehension based on a string of words and images whereas in video you get the concepts you're listening auditory and visual marry together very easily and it doesn't tax the brain as much and so if you put it on faster speed or not you can process it and gather a lot more information more quickly so i think it's a fantastic medium to help increase your exposure in the world so this great company called Restream.io wrote an article um, called The Benefits of Making Use of Live Streaming and Live Video and How You Can Use It. And they prepared a list of 52 benefits. Now, of course, I'm not going to share all 52, but if you want to see them, go to the Restream.io blog and look for benefits of live streaming. And you can see the whole list. Here are a few that I pulled out for you. You can show your target customers your authentic personality. Words and voice and being authentic in your language and conversation on paper or on the screen are great. And you can do your best to be as authentic as possible by sharing your conversational style. But seeing the whole package of how your hand expressions, your body language, how you dress, um, your, your tone, all that forms a much different picture of someone. So it's really easy to share who your authentic person is in just being in a live video and just having a conversation with someone. So now, the other thing to think about is many would rather watch a video than read a white paper or a blog or a case study. And I don't think that that's a negative thing, but I think it's hard sometimes for me, at least, to read on a screen. I do much better reading on paper or in a book or in a tablet that I can hold at a different angle. So if I'm researching things and I'm using my computer, I can. it's very difficult for me to read more than one screen of text without having to go back and it just doesn't work as well for me. And I find that that's the case for a lot of people. 
reading isn't as easy on a screen or electronically. So if you could provide another way to get the same content, but make it easy and make it easier on your potential customer, your target audience, then I'm all for it, right? I mean, it just broadens the base of um, making things accessible for your potential customers. Now think about when you were in school, right? They talk about learning modes and, um, you know, there were children that were really great at writing. There were kids that were really great at listening. There were kids that were really great at reading, right? And kids that are really good at being visual. So you have the art student or the mathematician or whatever. I mean, people excel at different things. So by providing information in multiple mediums and multiple styles, you're just attracting a larger audience or giving more information to a larger audience, okay? Now the third thing I have on this slide is it's easy to interview industry experts on live video shows. Live video shows are attractive to industry experts and professionals, right? Because they want the exposure as well to your audience and then the larger audience that you're going to reshare it with. So. I mean, podcasts are very popular because they get reshared as well. So it's easier to do an interview on a live situation and build up buzz and try to draw in more of an audience to watch your live video if you have an industry expert. So I think it's just easier to have those great interviews. You could do them and record them and play them later in many different settings. But I think in live video, you get a lot more bang for the buck if you do it in live video, my opinion. Now here are a couple more reasons that you know live video benefits you, right? It helps you build your business brand. Now we talk about a lot on this show how your business is, you know, your website is your foundation of your business. You want to be seen in search engines. You want to use the same things consistently across all your profiles and your social media platforms. Live video helps lock all that together by using social media platforms to produce this content that you can then put on your website or, or post to another social media platform. It just helps reinforce your whole brand by demonstrating what you believe in on your website, what you say in your blog, what you say in your case studies or your white papers or whatever else it is you produce. It just gives you another opportunity to speak openly about what you do and add that to the quiver of things you have for people to see. Okay. Now it also helps your business be more transparent and it shares its human side. So let's say that you're just selling um, courses, right? And your course is about uh, building a website, okay? Like something I might do. And so you have this great course and it teaches people how to use a certain tool to build the platform and build the pages and what they all are. But that doesn't say anything about what I believe. I mean, I include what I believe in some of my courses, but when someone's examining you and examining whether they're gonna trust you, Showing your human side, showing what you believe in a live video or video series helps them more rapidly adapt and decide if they're going to trust you and whether they like what they hear. And it gives the transparency of things you've experienced, how you relate to other people, whether you have relationships with other industry experts. There's so many different positive things that come from seeing an image of someone relational that are all subconscious kind of and you share your humanity a bit you share your smile you share your laugh what makes what's funny to you what you believe in so I think it's just really really important and then live video lets you grow a community around your brand because live video um, you can't just do a one-off and just create one live video I mean you can but it won't be as beneficial to you as if if you create a series, like pick a day, Tuesdays at 4 p.m., you're going to go live on Facebook and do that every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Create a scheduled slot on Facebook, and we'll talk about how to do that later. Um, and then, excuse me, and then 
people will get to know that you're going live and anyone any of your your friends will know or whoever your followers are or whatever you're connected with on Facebook will know about it and then you can promote it on other platforms and in your emails and say hey drop by my live we're gonna have such and such guest and you can create buzz around these things and build up a larger following and not just for the sake of numbers but it's always nice to have people in the room when you're doing a live video just because you can interact with them and answer questions and it becomes a little bit more valuable to the audience. Live video with or without viewers doesn't matter because people can always watch it afterwards and that's fine. But you should do it on a regular basis so you can build up a library of interactions so people who do want to binge watch or watch a few in a row can watch a few in a row. So I believe that you can build community around these events by having them scheduled and regular. Now, where can you create live video, right? There are three platforms that allow you to create live video. Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Let's talk about YouTube. YouTube is owned by Google. It's the second most visited site after the Google search engine on the browser has a 122 million active users per day. So search results with video are more enticing and engaging for people because they show a little thumbnail and people want to see video more often. Um, search engines are important as well. So by having content on YouTube, whether you upload a live from Facebook and LinkedIn and you save it and you upload it to YouTube or you create it natively on YouTube as a live video, your audience visits these search engines often and that will get delivered to many people if you put the right tagging on it and the title, etc. It, it will be available to a lot of people. Then you can also add it to your website so that you repurpose the content there and that gets indexed by Google so there'll be another opportunity for Google to understand what your video is about and put it into their database so it can be delivered as search results. So all of this improves your chance to be delivered, delivered to your potential clients and customers and be put in front of them. So you kind of create the whole circle of creating something live, saving a recording, and then putting it up on all your platforms so that it can be shared. And then being able to have that all indexed or marked as content that's available for Google to deliver as a result when someone asks a question that's relevant and your video is relevant. So, um, so we're repurposing your video. And how do we do that, right? As I said, you download the video at the end of your live session, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube. Then you're going to upload it to YouTube. If you already created it in YouTube, you don't upload it to there, but upload it to YouTube if it's Facebook or LinkedIn. Then you're going to share the link to it <clears throat> in emails, your blog articles, and other writings, and you're going to create a page on your website that is relevant to that live video series that you're doing. So now when you upload the video, the video is recorded separately from other things you're created, right? And it's you're, you're going to repurpose it just like you would a podcast. So it's an asset when you create it. You want to put a link on the website to YouTube, okay? that makes your website load faster. You don't want to have uh, some website builders let you just add the file, you know, the, the video file to the page directly, and that can slow down your website because your website company has to deliver that video for anybody that's viewing that page. If you put a link to YouTube, it's faster. It's a faster loading video for your viewer because it will open a separate tab and then YouTube will be delivering the content from their database and they have an amazing data center with a gajillion servers and lots of power to produce and send that video much faster and quickly than your website provider can do. 
So then you also gain extra exposure in search when you have this link on your website as well as in YouTube, right? And then you also have it in Facebook if it's in Facebook or LinkedIn. So you just complete the whole circle as I talked about before. Now, on the website page for the video, you want to have an image for the video that should be enticing. Now, when you create a, um, a live video on any platform, they typically take the first frame as the thumbnail or the image that goes along with the video, right? The first flat image you see with the direction, with the uh, player um, buttons on it. Well, for me, that's often my hands like this or my mouth open or it's just not interesting. <laughs> and I know you all, I appreciate, I appreciate you all being patient with my thumbnails for a while. They were not very attractive. But it's helpful to put an image that's relevant to the topic you're speaking about so people understand what it is and you don't just, you know, have your mouth open or your hands in the air like this. Smile's nice, but it would be better if you have something else. Then you want to put some text or description of the video for viewers and search engines to read. Whether that's, you know, I've interviewed such and such and we had a wonderful conversation about X, Y, and Z, or whatever it is. If you can, it's also important that you could put a timeline of the subjects you covered and say, you know, at one minute, this, at 2.2, it's this, at four minutes, it's this. Just, you know, brief headings so that it lets people jump ahead to the relevant topics and then it also gives some additional information to the search engines when they're reading that text on your page. And don't forget the link, obviously, to YouTube. Um, so you are going to create connections and links to the video from other content you create for posting. So you might create a blog down the road in the future about some topic and there could be a snippet in a live video that you want to cut out and use for that blog, right? So think about all these things that you're creating in your library. They are truly assets for use now to create the circuit of exposure, maximum reach for everything that you do, but also for the future. So if you take good notes about what your conversation's about when you do these things, and I know that's really hard to do because you get caught up in creation of, I know I do it, creating Canva images and all these things, and I forget when they, where I put them and what they were made for and all those things. But if you do this with your videos, then you can reuse the videos and possibly the topics in the videos for snippets for other purposes later whether it's uh, a sizzle reel for the beginning of an event you're doing or you're doing something online and you want to give people a sample or uh, you're creating reels for Instagram that, that have snippets of you saying something or quotes. You just want to realize that when you create these things, they're not just a session on whatever. They're an asset and you should safeguard them and protect them and catalog them to the best of your ability so that you can use them in the future. And they're not all going to be, you know, newsworthy for the future. Like, you know, 9 out of 10 may be just sessions. But that one, that one where something magical happens, where you have a great guest or you have a great conversation with someone in the audience or you feel like you did a really great job at speaking, that's the one you want to reuse. So you never want to expect it's not going to be good. You want to expect it's going to be good and you want to keep that gold. You don't want to ever let it slip away. Now the other thing that you want to do is um, at the end of a video on YouTube you can link to another video and on your website page when they finish your video you can say hey go to the next video or show a thumbnail for the next video on that page. You also want to include a full list of all the videos you have on a media page that you can, they can link to in the footer menu or somewhere that they can get to a list of your full things or send them to your YouTube channel if you want. Um, I tend to try to have the full list on the website so that the search engines will read the full list and then index all the pages as a result of it. So I think it's important to do it there. But if you can't right away, send them to your YouTube channel 
temporarily so that they can see all the videos after they've watched one. So, um, actually, before we do this, I want to show you how we do um, a live video on Facebook. So, if you give me a second, I can. Let's see. Here you go. Okay, so this is my Facebook page. Let me get to the top here so you see Denise Malay. So, I'm going to go to my pages, make this as big as possible. And here's my Denise Millay page and my Marketing Matters page. So let's go to Marketing Matters. Now this is actually a separate page from my profile. And up here, you see where you can create a post, right? This is where you can create a live video event or all these things. So all you have to do is click on this live and it tells you exactly what you have to do. So if you want to go live by yourself or with others, or you can go live now or in 24 hours, you can schedule it. So you can also create a test broadcast. And this is um, your scheduled broadcast you have coming up or active broadcasts that are going on or showing here. And then you can create a, a live video event that's going to happen so that you can invite people to it. What I would say is you want to create your test broadcast, so you would just say create new. Now I don't think it's going to let me do that because I'm using my camera for something else, but you pick the video source, you invite some people, select your source, and then it waits for the camera to show up and then you can start going live, right? Let me get off of here. Come on. So once you have all this stuff set up, then it's going to ask you if you want to go live, right? So you just follow the images here. Now, if this gets too confusing, I'm going to say go to the Facebook support page and just type in, how do I go live? How do I create a live video? And they'll step you through it a minute at a time, you know, one little thing at a time. Now you can also do uh, LinkedIn live videos. They've started initially to just roll this out to a few people, but now they are um, a lot more people have the ability to do it. So it's in your profile. So here are my profile. Uh, settings. What do I have in my settings? Syncing. Autoplay videos. No. Visibility. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I should have done this ahead of time and I didn't. Alright, this is not going to be helpful to you right now, so let me tell you this. You have to have a profile that's a creator profile, okay? Once you have a creator profile, you are allowed to go live on LinkedIn video, okay? So here, <clears throat> it's a video to share, so that's not what you want to do. Okay, so this is not very helpful right now. How did I not get this right? I've done it before and now I can't remember. Isn't that terrible? Oh my god. This is embarrassing. Okay, so you have to create an event. And it can be, you know, a series every other week, or you have to do each one, whatever. And you're going to do it online, it's LinkedIn Live, and then you're going to give it a name and a time. Okay? Then once the event is there, when you click on it, it will get you to connect your camera and all those things so that you can create your event.
create your video. I'm sorry about that. Um, and then YouTube Live, let's do that real quick before we run out of time here. And I'm logged into my account. So when you go to your videos, Creator Studio and you hit create, you want to go live right here. Um, the first time you do this, you're going to have to wait 24 hours to go live. So you're going to request to go live by clicking this button and once you get 24 hours you will get to use it. Um, that was a different account, that's why I'm seeing that again. So um, in any event, those are the three platforms that you can go to and like uh, create live videos. So now here is my free gift for you today. It's a guide containing info on five website secrets to make sure your ideal customers find you. You can go to this web address https colon slash slash dmalay.com slash five f-i-v-e. Take note of that and let me give you a summary of what I do in my business. I create websites products, digital products, automations, email campaigns for entrepreneurs and business owners who don't have the time to get up to speed on all the platforms and make everything connect and work and they'd rather just spend their time in their business doing other things. So I do it for them. If you have any questions and you would like to understand my services more, please go to dmalay.com and take a look around there. Contact pages there if you want to reach out. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you could join me for this episode of Marketing Matters. Um, I know how precious your time is, and my hope is you came away from this episode with some nuggets you can apply to your business. My aim is to provide clear, useful info so you can have thriving business, amazing relationships with your customers and clients. And as always, if you have a question, drop it on my show Facebook page, Marketing Matters Show, or you can go to my website and send a question or a comment there. And join me here next week for our next episode where we're going to dive into more marketing topics that matter for you. Thanks so much for your time.